What is a Delaware Statutory Trust, a DST? If you are a real estate investor, there are many benefits that you may want to consider. In this episode, I'm going to explain what a Delaware Statutory Trust is, how it works, and how it works in association with the 1031 exchange. Welcome to another episode of the Financial Fast Lane. My name is Lane Martinson. Today we're talking about the Delaware Statutory Trust, or DST for short. So uh, if you are a real estate investor, or you've been investing in real estate for many years, you, you own some rental properties, and then you approach retirement age, um, you can be faced with some challenges or some unpleasant consequences regarding taxes and, and other factors. And so can a landlord truly retire? And so uh, I'm going to uh, explain what a Delaware statutory trust is, how it works, in conjunction with the 1031 exchange. So uh, let me come pull up my computer here. So the problem is that um, if, you, if you sell your properties that you've had for many years, um, you've taken depreciation over a long period of time, the, the properties have, have appreciated over time. And so if you sell, you're going to have some serious capital gains uh, and tax consequences, right? You also face, if you, if you hold on to the properties, you face the risk of ongoing maintenance costs. Maybe you have some older properties. Uh, you know, a new roof might be something down the road that's going to be an expense to you. And as you get it into your retirement years, you may not want to have those headaches. And so um, also, you know, you can have problems with tenants, right? Um, the, the eviction laws can sometimes cause a problem where you're, you're not able to evict bad tenants or it's a, it's a lengthy process. And so some of those things, um, a lot of times people would like to retire from all of those headaches. And so how do we do that? So if we sell um, highly appreciated real estate that has been fully depreciated um, over time, you're really going to have some significant capital gains expenses, right? Both at the federal level and the state level. There's a depreciation recapture um, that they're going to that comes in the form of a tax, and then depending on your income level, uh, you also may have the net investment income tax on top of that. And so it's not uncommon. If someone is to sell an investment property to, for the, the you know, capital gains and all the combined taxes to be in the neighborhood around 40%. So um, it's a really significant chunk. And so most people, when they re realize just how heavy those tax consequences are, they don't want to sell, right? So they to hold on to the properties. Um, now, the 1031 exchange, so let's, let me just give you kind of a uh, basic understanding of that, and you may be already real familiar with that, but the, uh, the, in the tax code, section 1031, it has been around since 1921, so it's, it's certainly not new. It allows you to sell uh, an investment real estate property and essentially roll over into a new property of like kind, so real estate to real estate. It can be any type of real estate, meaning it could be land, uh, commercial, real estate, whatever. Any of those are gonna qualify um, for the 1031 treatment. So that's not new, um, but the 1031 allows you to sell a property, defer the tax, and move that over into a, a new property, right? But sometimes finding a new property may be a challenge, or maybe you don't want to try and find another property, right? The 1031 is going to allow you to defer the depreciation recapture. It can also um, help build additional cash flow based on your loan to value. could be improved. And we'll talk a little bit about that. And you can create additional depreciation benefits. So to understand the DST, the property ownership structure allows the small investor to own a fractional interest in a large institutional, high quality, professionally managed commercial property along with other investors, um, not as limited partners, but as individual owners within a trust. And so it's a way for you to do, sell a property, do a 1031 into 
um, a DST where you now own high-end real estate of your choosing. So typically it's going to be multifamily, large, high-end apartment type buildings or medical facilities or whatever the, the properties are, senior living facilities. Um, so you actually have ownership in these properties along with others within this trust. And so you have all the benefits of ownership, meaning uh, any appreciation on that real estate you're going to you're going to be getting, the income coming off um, is going to pay out to you. Um, so you get all the benefits of of real estate ownership, but you have none of the risks or liabilities associated with owning your own smaller properties. The Delaware Statutory Trust is not very well known. It's only been around and it was approved in 2004. So it really is a 21st century um, option that, that didn't exist in the past. Now, a lot of times people will confuse it with a REIT. Um, it's, it's quite different than a REIT. A REIT does not um, qualify for 1031 treatment, which is the big, a big difference, but also the quality of the investments um, are much more uh, high end and specific where REITs, you don't know what's what's going on inside of the real estate portfolio. A DST is um, securitized real estate. So it is regulated by the SEC, which means that they are only available through um, SEC registered investment advisors would need to help you um, get into a DST. So again, you can sell an investment property, do a 1031 exchange, into a DST, you're going to get the tax deferral of the capital gains, you're going to defer depreciation recapture, you're going to be able to accomplish high cap rates, instant diversification. Diversification can be not only in types of real estate but in across multiple states. So you could you can really have better diversification. Um, you have no tenants, toilets, or trash to, wor to worry about or to manage, so it's truly a passive investment, professionally managed, and they can close quickly. Now you may, you know, if you've done 1031 exchanges in the past, you know that um, you have to have a replacement property found in, within the time allotted. And if you don't, uh, you know, that can, that can create a problem for you, right? Where you end up taking the capital gains tax on a sell. Um, sometimes the DST is used just as a backup. So if you're selling a property and you haven't fully identified your replacement property, in a very short time, we could complete the 1031 into a DST and avoid all those taxes. So closing can be quick. Uh, also, you know, with real estate, you get the step up in basis. And so that would, that would be the same with the DST because it's, it's real estate. You got all the benefits of real estate. Now, the DSTs, um, they do require that you are an accredited investor. So um, it doesn't mean that you have to have real investment real estate and do a 1031. Um, some folks just would like to be more diversified and they'd like to own real estate. And you can simply just take some money and just invest directly into a DST um, uh, without having ever been a real estate investor. So there's, there's a lot of flexibility and options there. Now, a DST is going to be held on average around five to seven years. It would never be more than a max of 10. So once you are in the DST, uh, there's no liquidity until that sells. And it, and it will sell for sure within 10 years. And usually within five, you know, six, seven years, they're going to sell. And when that sells, then you're faced with the same issue. You either 1031 into another property you do 1031 into another DST, is, is what most folks do. Um, and you can just continue doing 1031s until your kids get that step up in basis. So who is the typical investor in a DST? What is the investor profile? It's generally going to be those who have been holding investments, um, investing in rental properties for many years. You've taken depreciation over many years. There's been a lot of appreciation in the real estate. Um, but you're really wanting to transition from active management to more of a passive management. You're more interested in preserving principal and assets and having more stable income without the surprises of 
expenses and other troubles that, that can come up with your real estate. So it, it's certainly, that's probably the majority of folks interested in DSTs, but there's also young professionals who simply want to hold real estate um, in a passive way, and uh, you can hold high-grade, um, you know, fractional ownership of these large, high-end commercial projects, multifamily and so forth. And so um, I would encourage you to, to learn more if uh, you have some interest in that. You don't, it is, it's not just for people who have, are already investing or have been investing in real estate for a long time. Um, you, you don't have to do a 1031 exchange to get into a DST. You, if you're, assuming you're a accredited investor, you can simply invest directly into a DST. You, you have fractional ownership um, and passive income that comes off of that. For more information, I have this great booklet on the DST, and you can simply download that for free. Uh, the information is in the description below. And uh, please don't take anything I say here on this video or any of my videos as investment advice. Um, it is purely educational. Investment advice can only be given on a, in a one-on-one -on -one setting. And so I hope you found value in this video. And uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel, I hope that you will do that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of The Financial Fast Lane.